going to be getting ready right now and I thought I would film and do it with you guys. I obviously am not with my normal background. I didn't want to like move everything and set it up because um, I'm trying to just do a, a little bit of a quick makeup look so I can get out the door. That's why we're in a different spot but I have my orange juice and a few topics on my phone and a list that I thought we could chat through and um, we're going to do my makeup. So that's what this video is going to be. If you're interested, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment, interact with me somehow, maybe. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive in, shall we? Um, so today, let me get all my stuff together here. I'm going to be working out of my makeup basket. And some of the things that I had in there were little samples from the Fenty line. So I have a couple here that I still need to use. So I think I'm going to um, give this a try. So I have a primer and the foundation here. I have my Cover FX custom cover drop. So if this turns out to be a little bit too dark, I can work with it. Do my eyeshadow first so that if I make a mess, I can clean it up. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll just start there and I will probably try to use at least one of my eyeshadow roulette shades today. I don't really know what kind of an eye look I'm going for yet. I should probably figure that out soon since I'm about to begin but you know whatever. I'm wearing like a cream top so I feel like anything would really work. So on my list the kind of theme of things that I wanted to talk about was reflection of last year for me and some kind of goals or aspirations for this year and starting kind of with the goals for this year I did look at the goals I set for myself last year and of course going into 2020 I had no idea we'd be in a pandemic I had no idea my work life was going to change so much but working from home and not traveling like obviously I couldn't predict that so a lot of the goals that I set for myself as 2020 went on just become less and less relevant um, because of the needed changes in my life for, you know, safety, myself and others. So I'm just gonna kind of ignore some of those goals because I just, I don't want to bog myself down of, oh my gosh, you didn't finish them or you didn't complete them because some of them are just, they're not, like I said, they're not relevant. They're not something I could even do. So that doesn't, to me, count as a failure because it just means that I adapted. Um, which I do think is a theme of last year is adapting and kind of being ready for change and I guess kind of accepting it. Um, so yeah, all things considered, I feel like last year was a pretty decent year for me. I think I'm just going to use my Anastasia quad here. Um, the shade Dusty Rose down here is in my eyeshadow roulette, so I can use this. Um, but I've just been wanting to reach for this more, so I think I'm going to play with this today. Um, what was I saying? I can't remember. Yeah, some of the goals last year just couldn't, couldn't be done. But I am proud of the adaptability, um, you know, and just basically for a lot of people, I feel like it, it was all of a sudden overnight, boom, you're at home. You're at home for school, you're at home for work, you're just at home. And there wasn't really a lot of time to prepare for that. There wasn't a lot of um, knowledge of what that would be like. You know, we we're all, I felt like for a while there in the same boat of just trying to figure it out and just trying to make do and, you know, process, I guess. So that is something that I feel is very important and added a lot of lessons to my life. Um, because at the end of the day, there are things that are going to be out of your control. And that was kind of a lesson I needed to learn again and learn to accept. So with all those things being said and going into 2021, knowing that I am still working from home, I have not been back to my office since March. Um, so, I, and I don't have a return date yet either. So I don't know if I'll ever like be back in my office really. I don't know if they're keeping it. I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> we know that the earliest they would ever ask us to go back to the office is fall, like when back to school happens. But who's to say, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. 
I'm just gonna get my hair out of my way. Um, so that's, you know, I know that I'm going to be working from home a big chunk of the year. I know um, kind of what that looks like for me. So I felt a little bit more comfortable thinking about this year because I had a little bit of experience of what, you know, it's like. So one thing that has been a struggle that I went through most of 2020 is burnout. I burnt out of work so many times. And part of that is for my job before this, I would travel almost every week and I would go to see my customers. Um, so, you know, I might see one customer this week and then I'd fly home on Friday and then I would see a different customer the next week. I would have a rotation. Very rarely, I think only maybe twice in my career, I was at the same same place two weeks in a row, you know what I mean? I was always kind of on a rotation. And what happened is now instead of being in person, I'm doing trainings and those um, visits are virtual now, right? So I'm still doing those, but what it means is I'm not flying. So I'm not in the air, I don't have like a travel day, I don't have that time. Um, and there are benefits to that, right? Like I can actually get more done, but I'm almost, and I hate to say this, but I'm almost like too available to the point where I'm training all day, which I can typically when I'm training, you know, I'm on Zoom, I have my camera on and I'm training all day, I'm talking all day, whatever. And then what will happen is one of my other customers will say they need me and I'll end my training, like an eight-ish hour training, and go right into other customer calls, which normally, if I'm um, on site, if I'm with that customer, I would then be driving back to my hotel. I wouldn't be taking another phone call, you know what I mean? That wouldn't have been something that I would have done before. Um, it would have been, you know, I'm, I'm unavailable. I need you to either contact one of my coworkers who's helping me cover or, you know, reschedule for another time. But because I'm at home, I don't always feel like I have a reason to say no because technically I'm available, you know? Um, and that's been a struggle for not just me, but for my team as well. We've all felt this and we are all really conflicted and obviously my management knows. And there's times where it is a lot easier for us to just do that. But when you do that day after day after day, week after week after week, it is exhausting and so that's just like a side story right but I'm trying to be better about my work-life boundaries um, and I know that I had to adjust with the working from home but I still feel like I'm overextending myself in a lot of cases I'm working late I'm working earlier in the morning I'm offering um, extra meetings extra whatever that I normally wouldn't and so with the blessing of my management you know they said yeah you can you can say no, you can suggest other op options, blah, blah, blah. So I'm trying this year to respect my boundaries. And also with that is scheduling time off, to be honest, um, because, you know, when you can't go on vacation in a traditional sense necessarily, what else are you going to do? You know, I mean, you're not working that day, but it's hard to justify, well, like I'm not doing anything, you know, and I could be working and it's not like I'm sick and I... I need to be like sleeping and resting. I'm just, I'm fine. I'm not just not working. And so one of my goals is to take a three day weekend every month. I'm gonna pause right there and do my eyeliner. Okay, there we go. Just had to focus there. Um, what I was saying is one of my goals is to take a three day weekend every month, at least. <clears throat> and my work makes that easy for a lot of months. I mean, I would say they're pretty generous with giving us holidays. Um, you know, so I'm filming this over um, the long weekend in January for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. We get President's Day in February. Um, you know, I get like Columbus Day, I get Veterans Day. I mean, it's in a lot of months, there are worked in, you know, three day weekends already. But there are a few months where there isn't. And I just find a three day weekend really does do wonders for me for resetting and just regrouping I guess um, and it's something to look forward to you know okay I have three weeks and then I have a Friday off or I have a Monday off or whatever so 
I have already scheduled the Friday I'm going to take off in March. Um, and I'll just kind of evaluate what my life and work looks like for April. Um, but that is something that I'm trying to do. And I've shared that goal with my management. You know, I'm like, I need to just be more proactive because I was working so long, like so many long hours, week after week after week. And I, I just didn't feel justified to take time off and I need to be better at that. So that is something I'm trying to do is um, have a long weekend, at least one day off a month. Um, and like I said, sometimes work already takes care of that for me, but um, not always. Just clean up that mascara there. So that's one thing I'm going to try to do. All right, let's try this new primer. So this is the Fenty Soft Matte Primer. Never tried it, but I do like that they added a primer with their foundation samples. That is so great because what if I fall in love with both, you know? <laughs> All right, so let's get some of this on my face. Feels good. I like matte primers that aren't super silicone which is funny because I have two that I'm trying to work through right now that are pretty silicone but it's just really nice to have a different option for a matte primer because I do have oily skin and I need a good primer. It kind of smells tropically. So we'll let that sink in for a minute here. I do have a little bit left. I could probably get another application, so I'm just gonna close that sucker up and I'll probably use it tomorrow so that it doesn't get too dried out, you know? Maybe I need like a bobby pin to like hold this shut. I'm gonna work on that later. Okay, so two other goals that I wanted to share with you guys that are not my work relation. One of them is YouTube related. And that is, I really make it my goal to try to post two videos a week. And that is so much easier because I'm working from home. It was very hard for me to be consistent with that when I had a crazy travel schedule. So I'm trying to lean into this whole work from home thing and upload twice a week. Um, you know, my channel has a long history. And at this point, I just want to post things that... I enjoy watching or I find interesting because to me that feels the most genuine um, and so I'm at the point now where I have quite a few video ideas I have different series type things that I'm doing or projects that it's pretty easy for me to schedule out two videos a week I do schedule out my videos um, on calendars and I have pretty much the whole year scheduled for like those recurring series which is nice to know like, okay, at the beginning of the month I do this and at the end of the month I do this and middle of the month I do this, that kind of thing. Um, but I, I also think that having that second video slot on some of those weeks allows me to explore and try something different. You know, I really like, I don't even know if they're called tag videos anymore, but like list videos, um, such as the one that I just posted on my channel about, you know, like 10 things I no longer buy, like videos like that. I find really interesting and you can totally go down a rabbit hole with those, you know, where you, you watch one person's and you watch another and blah, blah, blah. And I enjoy that. I enjoy watching other people create that type of a video. So I wanted to create my own too. And so I feel like having two videos a week allows me to do my normal kind of series that I'm choosing to do. And then it also allows me to throw in some other things in there that um, are just kind of bonus and I might not have planned and I just saw someone else do it or the idea came to me and I felt inspired to film it. So that's going to be my YouTube goal. I did um, Vlogmas for the first time this year and that was really fun. I, um, I enjoyed the challenge of it, especially this year because Minnesota, our bars, restaurants, everything was shut down during that time frame. We were shut down from right before Thanksgiving um, through the second week of the year. No, first week of the year. So Thanksgiving and Christmas was shut down in Minnesota. So it's not like we could really do a lot of other things. So it was nice to have that kind of project so that I knew, okay, well, 
I need to film 31 videos this month and edit them and post them and do all the things. So uh, that was a fun project for me. I would like to do that again in the future. I don't know if I'll do it this year or not. We'll have to see what my life is like, but it was fun and it was, um, I like watching people's vlogmases or, you know, kind of the take on vlogmas now because I vlogged uh, throughout the week and posted a weekly, like actual proper vlog, but the rest of my videos were just content, you know, that I was creating. Okay, this is a little yellow for me, but I think I can make the shade work. So I'm just going to roll with it um, and I'm going to get my under eye concealer going. So that is my YouTube goal, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And I just learned how to do an intro, which is so fun. And I learned how to do my end card, which, you know, is something that was ultimately really easy. I can post the videos I followed down below of the tutorials of how to do that because it was so stupid easy and I should have done it a long time ago, but I just did it. So that was, um, you know, kind of just putting more into my videos right now anyway. But YouTube is a hobby for me. It really is just an outlet. It's a way for me to connect with people that, you know, share similar goals or interests, which, you know, you can't just walk in somewhere to a coffee shop or something and say like, hey, does anyone else like using up makeup? Like, it's weird. So <laughs> YouTube definitely offers, and same with Instagram, an avenue to meet people and, and have connections with people who are like-minded that you might not find in your normal community. Um, so I do like the value YouTube adds there. All right, I'm just seeing if I need, I just need a little bit of concealer on my chin here. Just a little bit there. Um, so yeah, I, you know, YouTube, I don't ever foresee right now anyway, being like a full-time job for me, but it is absolutely fun and I enjoy the entire process really. I like filming, I like editing, I like posting, I like commenting, I like watching. I mean, everything in the process of YouTube I enjoy. And so that is really why I keep doing this. If you wondered, I don't, that was such a tangent. Um, yeah, so that is that. And then the other thing that I really wanted to kind of like talk about with you guys is I want to try other hobbies. I feel like when people ask, you know, what are your hobbies? Like, I, I feel like I don't know what to say because it's not like I'm a woodworker or it's not like, oh, I, I do pottery. Like, I just never feel like I know how to answer that question. So I decided this year is going to be the year that I'm just gonna try some new things. So I am trying, wait for it, watercolors. Um, I will link down below the kits that I picked up, but it's just fun to try something new and, um, art is something I've always struggled with. I remember being in elementary school and one year we had to draw a bicycle and like paint it or something with it. But I remember like seeing it so vividly in my head, what I wanted, but I couldn't make my hand. I couldn't make my hand match what was in my head because I can see it and I feel that way for a lot of things. I feel like I can envision or see a lot of things, but it's hard for me to get that out. So with the watercolor, I got this book that's um, for like learning how to watercolor, beginners, things like that called Watercolor With Me. I got the ocean version. There's a couple of different ones. And so it's already drawn there <laughs> and I just have to fill it in, but I still think that that's helpful because again the drawing is the part that I struggle with but then like being creative with the colors and the textures and all of that that's what I feel like I can do so it's been a great one day that I've been watercoloring and I hope to do more but it's also something that isn't screen related um because I have been obviously on zoom for work literally all day every day I if I have a day where I have a two hour stretch of no meetings, it's like the best day of my life. I seriously have one of the busiest schedules I feel like I've ever had and I'm always on Zoom. And then I, you know, I do watch a lot of YouTube and we watch Netflix and movies and things like that. But I just feel like I wanted something to do that wasn't screen related. 
And so watercolor is what I chose. And I can listen to music, I can have it silent, I can do whatever, but it just offers a little bit, I don't know, a little bit of an escape from the screens. So that is why I chose the watercolor. And like I said, I hope I find some sort of fun in it, even as I keep going. I had fun today, but it was just the first time. So I'm learning and, um, you know, I'm obviously a beginner, so I, can, I feel like I can maybe only get better <laughs> uh, because I'm at that first day mark. So anyway, that's kind of the other thing. And I don't know what else I want to try. You know, my boyfriend and I both really love to cook, um, but it's more about the energy that we have. I mean, if we have energy at the end of the day, absolutely we'll cook and we'll try new recipes. But sometimes it's just really hard to convince yourself to do that <laughs> because you're so exhausted. So, um, you know, we would like to try some more recipes too, but um, anything else that I can do to really just bring something into my life as an outlet, I'm all for. So I just need to do my brows and my lips and I think I'm done here. I would love to know from you guys, are you trying anything new? Are you, um, you know, how are you feeling going into 21? Do you have any set goals? I feel like I'm trying to be a little bit loose with my goals and leave them up to interpretation because I really don't know what 21 has in store. <laughs> um, and I, I guess I just want to cut myself a little bit of slack here and allow myself to breathe and not feel the pressure of, oh, you're not doing this and you're not doing that because you know, it might not be the right fit. It just might not be. And so that is why I'm keeping mine a little bit more general. And I know some people do like a word of the year or um, like an intention. And I don't really know um, if I have a single word, but just two themes that I'm trying to use is um, kind of, I heard this before is be better than yesterday. And it doesn't matter like in what regards, but just try to do something today that would better yourself than you were yesterday. So that's, I feel like an easy thing to interpret differently each day, which is I like that flexibility. And um, sorry there. <laughs> the other one is to just assume positive intent. I feel, especially in this kind of virtual world where we're communicating more through email or text or just not necessarily in person as much as just to assume positive intent. I know I totally will read an email and think, wow, that was kind of snippy and like kind of get a, a mood about it. But I think a lot of times I'm the one interpreting it that way because maybe I'm already kind of in a mood or I'm already in a funk. And so there's no reason for me to be snippy back. And I'm just trying to assume that people are being positive in what they're asking because at the end of the day, it makes me feel better. It makes me feel better that like, you know, I don't know, to, to pull a positive spin on it, just to make sure that I'm not um, creating scenarios in my head that aren't real because I feel like I do that sometimes. So Anyway, that is going to be it. I'm all wrapped up. I'm getting hit up with texts of like, where are you? So <laughs> that's going to be it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys are working on this year. I absolutely would love to know. And that's going to be it for me. So I'll see you in my next one. Bye.